Ritsu, would you like to sit here? Because normally it's easier for the speaker to see you. Okay, so we always are. So I can see you. Today, we have two speakers. Fortunately, we have our first speaker who is going to talk about more about retirement, which is too far for me, but I would like to take some tips. Our speaker today is Jim Lockett. Jim will be talking about avoiding retirement penury, the maximum sustainable withdrawal rate. A little bit of introduction of his speech. In a recent interview, here Jim mentioned the 25 times rule, which says you should begin retirement with saving of 25 times what you plan to withdraw each year. This equals a 4% withdrawal rate. He said, he said this would give you about 90% chance of staying solvent in retirement. This provoked a lot of interest and questions after the interview, particularly about the 10% risk of going broke. So Jim will now take us on a deeper dive on this topic about how we should retire. Jim Lockett. We are on a manhunt here. Here's our wanted poster. We are seeking Max Sustainable. He's the leader of the withdrawal rate gang. They want to devour your retirement savings. Reward if we catch him? Peace of mind. Here's the setting. We're, in, we're playing the retirement game. You work, you build a big portfolio, you retire, you spend, and then do you worry? Or do you have that peace of mind? Well, if you have confidence that your withdrawal rate from your retirement nest egg is sustainable, then you have peace of mind. Otherwise, you might worry. What do we mean by withdrawal rate? Well, it's a ratio. Take the withdrawal in year one that you'll need to meet your expenses after whatever Social Security can cover does its thing, and divide that by your portfolio value in year one. That ratio, times 100 to make it a percent, is called the withdrawal rate. So an example, say $50,000 is the magic number for year one that you need to withdraw, and you have a million dollar portfolio, that would be a 5% withdrawal rate. Would that meet the 25 times rule mentioned in the introduction? No. That would be a portfolio of 20 times your withdrawal rate. If we uh, withdrew 40,000 in year one from the million dollar portfolio, then we would have the 25 times rule satisfied. That would be a 4% withdrawal rate. Now, a key assumption behind this definition of withdrawal rate and all the analysis that's going to follow is that your withdrawal in any other year, call it year N, and could be 2, <coughs> 10, 30, will be your year one withdrawal plus an inflation adjustment. And that's all. You don't look at your portfolio value. You're not taking a per percentage of your future portfolio because you don't want to be adjusting your spending in retirement by the stock market. You want to be ignoring the stock market and enjoying retirement. So example, if inflation is 2%, if that first year withdrawal is 50,000, then year two is 51,000. Year three is 52,020. No reference to what your portfolio is worth in year two or year three. What did he say? I said after year one, your portfolio value is ignore it because you're living the life of Riley in your hammock, right? Or doing wonderful public service. <clears throat> so we want Max Sustainable, part of the withdrawal rate gang. But future inflation and market returns are unknown. So how do we find Max Sustainable? Well, we look at history. 
we ask, would a 4% rate have worked for a retirement spending if your retirement spanned the years 1920 to 1959? That's a 40 year retirement. And then we ask, well, would it have worked for 1921 to 1960? Another possible 40 year retirement. And we do that you know, through 100 years of data, right? There'd be 60 possible 40 year periods and 100 years of data. Not exactly independent observations. It's not great data in that regard. They all but about 21 of them overlap each other, but it's all we've got. You're not gonna look at 19th century data to plan a 21st century retirement. Then we take a ratio, we divide the number of historic intervals where 4% was sustainable, meaning you didn't go broke before the end of the 40 years. <coughs> you divide that by 60, the total number of intervals in the data set. That gives you an estimated probability that 4% is sustainable. And then you could do the same thing for any other percentage withdrawal rate. You're and the thing that's making some of them work and some of them not is how did the stock market do and the bond market do and what was inflation during those different 40 year intervals. The ones that fail are going to be the ones that incorporate the Great Depression years or the ones that incorporate the stagflation years, 1970s. Those were terrible years for trying to live on a nest egg. So is 4% sustainable? The probability 4% is sustainable for 40 years is 86% if your portfolio is 50-50 stocks and bonds. It would be different if it was 75-25, it would be different if it was a 30-year retirement, and so forth. Is 5% sustainable? You like the guy sitting on the ledge fishing? Well, only 42% probability that that's sustainable with a 50-50 stock and bond portfolio. I was thinking of using this instead of the guy on the ledge, but. <laughs> okay, so why is the sustainable rate so low? I put together this little spreadsheet and it's available here at tinyurl.com TM retire. And what it does is simulate a retirement with a given set of numbers. Just an illustration of the arithmetic. There's no historic data incorporated here. So if you put in garbage assumptions, you're going to get out garbage results. Be careful, okay? We're illustrating the math. Here I put in, somebody starts with a million and a half portfolio. They have a 4% withdrawal rate, inflation 3%. Their average return on investment over 40 years is 10%. You'd think they'd be fine, but they go broke in year 32. <laughs> And they have, uh, okay, oh, I'm sorry. The reason is I put in a year one return of 20%. And I've tricked up this model so that, yes, you have the specified average return on investment, but I put in a really bad start to your retirement. And that's what causes portfolios to get devoured prematurely. 20% and then we just go with inflation for nine years and then the formulas crank up and say well we got to have a 10% average over the whole 40 years so they go up to 13% but the guy goes broke. And so we can fix uh, this by saying well suppose he only had maybe a minus 10% problem there. Then, aha, success, never. It works. It's sustainable. But there's a risk that you could be in that minus 20% world. That was a lot of information to digest, but I know it's really helpful. But before you retire, you need to make the money. And before you need to make the money, you either have to run a business or get a job. And that being said, our next speaker is Sarella. Sarella today will talk about networking and how to be successful in getting a job. She gave us a speech before about how to get a job, and now she's continuing with part two, networking. Welcome, Sarella. Thank you, Mr. 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 Thank you,
tests. As Patrick just mentioned, a few, I would say a few weeks ago, I was here talking about what I call job search part one, where we talked about three